see we can't get this shit right. What's up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. So here we are again at Craig and Automotive at TI Dyno as we are about to put dad's car back up on the dyno rollers because we've done a number of different like additions to the car that we feel will get it to where we need it to be. If you guys didn't get a chance to check that video out right here, you'll be able to actually see some of the things that we had to do to go through to transition to make better power here in a dyno. So let's pop in here, strap down, and make a couple pulls and see if we can't get it right this time. Um, I know it wasn't really what we wanted to do last time, uh, the very first dyno video, but it is what it is. Sometimes you gotta make adjustments. The dyno literally is a tool so you can figure this stuff out. You know what I mean? So we were losing pump pressure or whatever. So stick around, hit that like and subscribe. Let's get on into the dyno again. All right, so let me take the opportunity to catch you guys up. If you just now new to the channel or just now joining the Fox Body, um, world or whatever. This is a 1988 Ford Mustang LX50. This is just a stock car with basic bolt-ons. It does have a reinforced axle. This is what I call my dad's car. And this has a GT40 top end with a stock bottom end, rebuilt, refreshed, whatever. Uh, everything in this motor is Ford minus the triple valve springs for the most part. Long story short, 8788 was a speed density setup. You couldn't really tune that. Um, can, but you can't. In 89 to 93 was 89 to 93 had the mass air etc but 878 back in the 890s we were able to use this fmu to do power adder stuff and it used to be with like a vortex or whatever but with the new technology and the new turbos nobody that i know of or at least tried to you know do the fmu and the 19 pound injectors because it's just not plausible it's just not an optimal and, it, and they're right it's not optimal so basically all we were doing here is like experimenting on the dyno without tuning it to see what we could actually do on a stock motor with power adder so that's kind of where we're at last time we were here we made 340 wheel and it was ripped or it was lean as hell and we started getting pressure drop and we didn't have the proper wiring we were getting like clutch slippage there was a lot of problems we had last time but you know what that's what a dyno's for it's a tool to see how your fox body really is you know what i'm saying so it was able to tell me what i needed to do which i brought that other video to you and the changes that we needed to make to at least attempt to try to make good power on this setup. So now what we're going to do is we're going to strap down. We're going to get warmed up. We'll get right into making some good clean passes on the dyno. And then everything will be, uh, we'll probably make a couple passes. If it's super lean, then we're going to have to talk about what we're going to do after that. Last dyno was kind of uh, a disappointment with the, with the clutch and with the pump not keeping up and possibly the wiring harness. So we kind of believe you did that stuff in that new video. I'll stop talking and let's get this thing strapped down and... Alright, so last time on the video you guys seen this graph where this line right here was RPM versus over time or whatever so you could see how the clutch was just kind of like just really screwed up or whatever. So that's definitely one of the issues that we had. We put a, a, a Power Grip Ram HD, so shout out to Hamlin Motorsports and Mike Norcia from Ram for hooking me up with that. So hopefully the things that we did, we can make good power safely on this combo to prove that the old school stuff can still work on the new like turbo kit stuff. Because it worked just fine with the supercharger. We made like 330 horsepower, so it wasn't a whole lot. But like I said, now that the sensor's starting to warm up, it's kind of nice. It's actually showing an accurate reading, whereas my AEM one is like broken or something. So let's get this, let's get these wheels spinning and see if this, see if this actually makes a difference. I'd be very curious to see if my pump upgrade, my wiring upgrade, alternator upgrade, my clutch upgrade makes a difference. That's a lot of money, the time I spent on that. So. All right, so this 
pass number one. Hopefully we get to make more than one, but uh, what we may end up doing is messing with timing and boost. It depends on what this fuel gauge looks like. You know it did look really bad last time, so let's get it done. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and since I have an adjustable fuel pressure regulator I'm gonna go ahead and jack this up over 50. It's not really the optimal thing to do But it was already at like 45 46. We're gonna go over 50 and see if we can't lean it out or Give it a little more fuel. It does look a little bit better than what it was, but it's still pretty lean You know towards the end of the run as I took it to 6,000 it started getting down to 11 9 11 7 Which is where we wanted that but I mean it's it's untuned. So I mean we're kind of dangerous right now so I brought it up about six or eight pounds of PSI. Probably won't even matter, but this will tell us right now if we can do anything with the fuel, which I doubt. But we'll put it over the graph and see if we can't make some more horsepower.
and it's six pounds of boots, five eight. At the end, you were six, six one. one. So probably I'm, I'm should. How much you jack it up? About five or six, six, six psi. It was at forty eight. What's this? More money. More money for you? <laughs> no, no money for you. More money for her. <laughs> you can't put a price on fun. <laughs> can't put a price on fun. You see it? You hear it right there. So me and Kevin seem to think that the only way we're going to be able to make any more power, I mean, we just did the uh, six safely. safely, is to put a Terminator X on it or convert to mass air and go with binary editor. Yep. Now, uh, Dave does have, uh, you know, he, he does have some tune files for the binary editor for the DA1, but I don't think that's going to help much. We can try it. I guess that would be it. the next yeah. step. Yeah, that would be the next step. I mean, as far as... Right you want to go with this, it's the next step. Right, so, I mean, it works. Uh, maybe if we were at five pounds and it was a stock motor, it would be a little bit better. You know what I mean? Because this is a GT40 motor, so it is a little bit different. It's a little bit better than a stock motor. But I think with a, with, a, with a stock engine, if you were to put this on with an FMU at like five or six oh, pounds, it yeah, probably would be okay. Right. It would be, it'd be rich enough this to run it. It just wants more fuel. It just wants more fuel because of the combo, for sure. So stick around, we'll talk about it here in a minute. All right, YouTube, that's pretty much all I got for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed the dyno series that we've been doing with Dad's car with the GT40 stuff, the turbo, and the FMU. We all know that's not optimal, but it's kind of fun to try to take that old technology and see if it can work on the new turbo stuff because we didn't really have a lot of turbo stuff back in the 90s. But anyways, outside of that, I got a couple ideas of what we can do. I got some sneaky stuff coming up with the, that specific build um, that we're going to do, and we're going to try to continue our progress with, uh, with with the turbo FMU and possibly the other options that we're about to talk about soon. Anyways, if you guys enjoy the channel, you enjoy me doing things like this, check out that merch shelf below. I encourage you to check out that join button below. It helps to fund things like this on the channel. And I'm super appreciative to all my club members. Thank you for all your support to the channel thus far. But outside of that, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Thanks for hitting that like and hitting that subscribe. If you enjoy this stuff, we're going to keep doing stuff like this. So stick around. I will see you soon in the next video. Thank you.